Lawyers of Reddit, what is a law that doesn't exist, but normal people insist exists? The idea that you get a phone call after being arrested. The cops might give you a phone call, but there is no legal obligation for them to do so until they're done with you, unless you ask to talk to a lawyer. The cops are required to read your rights upon arrest, though that's often the best practice, your Miranda rights are only required when you are subjected to questioning while in custody. Unless both of those circumstances are true, the cops don't have to do anything, and the law supports that. The victim can drop charges, absolutely not. Once the government gets involved, usually by someone calling the cops, it is up to the government to drop the charges, not the victim. Their opinion can be taken into account, but it holds no legal weight. I used to be a newspaper reporter covering the court beat, and one of the court cases I remember was a guy who'd beaten up his girlfriend. She kept demanding that the charges be dropped, but the prosecutor refused to drop them. The victim actually refused to testify in court and stopped working with prosecutors, but they went ahead with the case anyway, using the victim's statements to police as well as photos of her injuries. The guy ended up getting convicted, but part of me wonders though if it got reversed on appeal since that may technically be a violation of the Sixth Amendment. In Alberta, children under 18 used to be allowed to go duck hunting the day before the start of hunting season. Neither the police nor the game wardens knew this, so my dad had to spell out the law to police, who still insisted on waiting for the game warden to come so the law could be spelled out to him too. Then before we got to leave, another game warden that didn't know the law showed up and he also had to be informed of the laws that he's supposed to enforce. I once had to explain to a police officer the law regarding the any person power of arrest in the UK in order to stop my friend from being arrested for arresting someone he caught stealing. Knowledge of the law is not a prerequisite for enforcing it. In America, a high school diploma is not always needed to be a cop. Are you too dumb to be a garbage collector? Don't worry, you could be a sheriff someday. SA Trigger Warning In the UK, it's legally impossible for a woman to R a man. Despite people always saying women can commit R2, they legally can't here. R necessitates the male organ and penetration, so women can't legally commit SA. Wait, 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 there's, there's no way. Hold on, let's look into this. So the Crime Prosecution Services website, cps.gov.uk, under Section 1, R, states that R is a crime of basic intent, and drunkenness is not a defense. Section 1R involves penetration of the female organ, rear, or mouth by a male organ. Therefore, a woman can only commit this offense as an accomplice. R is an indictable-only offense and carries a maximum of life imprisonment. Wow, so they're just straight up saying only men can do this, women literally can't do R. That's crazy! I did not expect that to actually be a thing and for them to be so straightforward about it. And the Crown Prosecution Services site was updated on the 8th of July, 2022. So, unless something's changed in the last two years, then that's still the way it is. Although in my Google searching, I did find a petition for the UK Parliament saying that we need to make SA laws equal. So it's nice to see that people are trying to pick up the slack where the legislators are failing. The whole, give me a dollar and you now have attorney-client privilege thing. That's not at all the standard. At least in my state. There's no requirement of monetary compensation for the privilege to kick in, just a subject belief that your confidential private communication is being made in furtherance of your claim or defense. People think that you can sue whenever something bad happens and get millions! Wrong. In my jurisdiction, you need to sue for actual losses. You need to show the court how the bad thing directly caused you to lose X amount of money, Damages are intended to compensate for an actual quantifiable loss. People also don't understand how hard it actually is to get the money. Even in the event you get an order, if the other party doesn't pay, it'll cost you thousands upon thousands and many years to prosecute the order that granted you compensation. And people get so angry with us for giving this advice because they're right. Something bad did happen to them, but the law just doesn't care. Litigation is very expensive, and only useful when you have a lot to gain from a very rich respondent. This isn't always the case. There is a thing called non-pecuniary damages, which are designed to compensate for intangible losses. Obviously, do your own research, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know what state or country you live in, but it is something that exists in certain places. You can't record a video of me! The reason you're saying that is so that the recording cannot be used against you as you harass whoever is telling you to be a decent human being, Karen, 
And for that, you deserve to be in a cell for the night. To be fair, I'm not a lawyer. But if I were, I would insist that pleading to not be recorded as you harass or assault someone is itself grounds for an extra sentencing as you are attempting to destroy evidence as it is being made. I'm not a lawyer, and I'm curious if this is true, but people who write fanfiction and say something like a disclaimer that the work doesn't belong to them, does that not actually do anything? Like if the creators wanted to, they could still sue the fanfiction writer or ask them to take it down? Not a lawyer, but I would think that would apply if the person writing the fanfiction received financial gain or other profit from the work. No financial gain is required. Damages can be claimed if said fanfiction made the original work look bad or something. Actually, it doesn't protect you in any way whatsoever. That disclaimer is pointless and doesn't help at all. The reason most fanfics get away with it is prosecuting all of the fanfictions would be more trouble than it's worth. And fair use, despite being a shite show, covers most of them. Australia doesn't have a protected right of free speech. Thanks, American TV. And even then, say whatever awful thing you want without consequence isn't what it's about. I've watched two people argue with a judge over this, and God knows how many with their counsel. My brother was a sheriff, and there was a few occasions where he was in a car chase and the driver would be surprised as hell when they would cross the county line and he was still right behind them. This ain't Duke of Hazards, bucko. And yes, they are allowed to continue pursuit out of their own county. Here's a basic yet relevant one. Liberty does have limits in all societies. A lot of people on the extreme left and right seem to think that being American means you can and should be able to do whatever the fuck you want. The fundamental social contract is that we all give up some freedom in order to enjoy the benefits of a functioning society. For example, you must wear a mask or else you will not be allowed to enjoy the benefits of the Costco, Karen. You can't refuse to wear a mask, putting the rest of society at risk, and then bitch about being denied your freedom. If you touch me, that's assault where people think that any kind of physical contact can be assault. Nope, the offense requires either malice or recklessness. Also, at least in New York and the USA, assault is perceptive. The victim had to be expecting harm. Battery is when actual contact is made with the intent to cause harm. Driving with the interior overhead car lights on is not illegal. Yo mom told you this was illegal when you were a kid too, huh? I actually had an experience with this. Got pulled over as a new driver, 16, because my interior lights were on. The car and I were so new to each other that I didn't know all of the controls, and I just left a bright parking lot. No laws were broken, but the cop told me that he stopped me for suspicion of a DUI, because having those lights on is an indicator of impaired driving. It's indicative of a lack of attention. Eh, makes sense. Probate attorney here. I've had so many people ask me when the reading of the will is going to take place, and I had to explain to them how that only happens in the movies. But one of these days, I'm going to have one, and hire a mysterious blonde wearing a veil to sit in the corner quietly, then I'll tell everyone that she inherits everything. Provided, of course, that she must adopt the descendant's cute but troublemaking six-year-old child that no one knew about, or she can spend the night in a haunted house. Her choice. In the UK, it's not illegal to park on someone else's driveway. It's classified as trespassing, a civil offense, not criminal, which means the police can't do anything. This particularly surprises people, as many think that they have exclusive rights to the parking outside their house. As a former lawyer in the UK, I've lost count of how many people thought that jaywalking was a crime. Unless it's a road that specifically states no pedestrians or a motorway, no such offense exists here. A law that exists, but is widely misunderstood, is the concept of entrapment. If the police put a bait vehicle in a high crime area, that is not entrapment. If the police are watching a bar known to overserve to see if there are impaired drivers at the end of the night, that is not entrapment. Entrapment only occurs when a government agent suggests committing a crime that you were not otherwise going to commit. This actually happened to an old high school teacher of mine. He thought he was going on a date with a lady he met online. When they met up for the date, the woman, who happened to be an undercover officer, was like, I'm not really interested in a date, but for X amount of dollars, I'll do whatever you want. To which he obliged. He was charged with soliciting an ass worker. But the charges were dropped since he was only actually interested in the date and had no desire to solicit anything until the officer brought it up. The one that is most frustrating to me is the idea of hearsay. It comes up all the time in all kinds of contexts. Even lawyers love using it when it suits them, saying something is nothing but hearsay and speculation. Usually what people mean when they say that is, don't believe them, they're lying, which, fair enough, 
But that's not what hearsay means. Lots of evidence is just a person talking. That's what a witness is. It's why testimony exists. It's not not evidence just because it's a person talking. Hearsay just means that in most cases, you can't have person A say that person B said XYZ in order to prove that XYZ is actually true. Hearsay. A heard B say it. It just means your witness can only talk about things they actually know about. Also, it doesn't count as hearsay when person B is actually the person on the other side of the case. Person A is totally allowed to say that person B told me, yes, I will commit the crime on Tuesday, if person B is a defendant who's been accused of committing the crime on Tuesday. You don't get to complain it's hearsay if you're the one who supposedly said the thing they heard. US ex-lawyer here. There is no law that requires the police to provide you with their name and badge number when asked. There may be internal policies, but it's not the law. There is also no law that requires the police to get a supervisor if demanded. Again, policy versus law. There is also no law that allows you to question whether an order given by the police is lawful or not. A court has to decide if the order was lawful after the fact. But there are laws to punish you if you do not comply. Quick edit, someone pointed out that in New York there's a law that requires cops to ID themselves and have a card. Which is fantastic. Thank you for correcting the statement. This one's a personal story. I had a negligent motorcycle driver force me to hit him from behind with my car. I was young and naive at the time, and had never been in an accident until then. Guy makes me sign a paper that says that the accident is my fault because I hit him from behind, and he wanted compensation. I explained the situation to my dad, and he concluded that the guy was obstructing normal traffic, and I had no option but to hit him from behind in this particular circumstance. The guy ended up taking us to court. He showed the judge the piece of paper that I signed, and I explained that I signed it under duress. To which the motorcyclist then explained that, by law, whoever hits from behind is responsible for the accident. The judge looked at him and asked if that's true. He said yes, and then the judge asked him to point out which law states that. He shut right the fuck up. Screw that guy. A lot of people don't seem to understand that co-signing a loan means you're on the hook for the loan as much as the other person. The car gets repoed and then they're shocked that their wages are getting garnished. Co-signing is not you saying you think your friend is a cool dude who's good for it. You're saying you will pay for it if they don't, and they want you on the hook because they think there's a good chance the main applicant is a deadbeat. Basically, don't co-sign shit for anybody. There was a big argument on Reddit the other day about whether spitting in someone's face is illegal. Hint, yes. It's specifically assault in almost all developed countries. Generally, however, there's nothing you can say to someone that justifies them hitting you. The guy who initiates the physical action, or reasonably construed immediate threat, like feigning a punch at someone, is the one who's broken the law, not the guy who called him a name. Sovereign citizen stuff. I feel like enough folks in my country have claimed to be sovereign citizens that it's become normal. But no, generally you can't declare yourself exempt from the laws in effect where you are. My first job while in school as a law clerk was to respond to wrongful imprisonment writs from prisoners. One of the first ones I was given was to respond to a guy that had claimed he was falsely imprisoned because he had sovereign immunity. He had changed his name to Jesus Christ and claimed that because he was the sovereign, he was not subject to our laws anymore and needed to be released. I remember being very confused on how to respond. I spent entirely too much time on that reply. So guys, that's it for today. Don't forget to leave your story in the comments below. I'd love to maybe do a video on them in the future. With that said, I'm Redlist. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time.